Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back with the 8th and final round of the Reddit Championship Series. After this, we will be moving to Top 16, and I thought I would bring you a match of two individuals that are on the bubble. One of these will be making it, and one will be staying home, unless I've done Breaker's math wrong, in which case they'll both be making it. But first, let me introduce my co-commentator. We've had Blade on, we've had Hardleg on, we've had Gage on. You know that I like to give a shout-out to, uh, to commenters with, uh... With less subs than me, smaller channels. This individual is just starting uh, his Yugi Tube career. Uh, let me know if I'm saying this wrong. It's it's Alex Simu is the name of your channel. Hey everyone, Alex Simo here, <laughs> aka Simo. <laughs> oh man. Oh gosh. Um, you may have seen uh Simo's uh Crush Card Cup, uh, which is available on his channel. I think my viewership is about a hundred percent shared with Simo at this point. Um, but if you're missing it, uh, there's a ton of sweet commentary in there, too. I thought I'd bring him on here and we'd talk through, uh, two extremely sweet decks. Um, Stanky is on, uh, Mech Knight Invoked, uh, but it's a really weird list. It aims to go into Cherubini and set up combos to go into Mech Knight Orange Sunset off of Sangan. We've seen a couple of, uh, the plays this deck is capable of, but it is... Just extremely big-brained. And then, um, Kisar 1 is on, uh, Salaman Great. Uh, don't want to play favorites, of course, um, but I'm not a giant Salaman Great fan, even though I know Alex is. Yeah, Team Salaman Great, let's go. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting deck. Let's actually... Yeah, it's an interesting series of decks, no, nonetheless. I mean, we've seen Mech Knight performing, uh, adequately well. We've seen Salaman Great performing adequately well. Again, like, even though this is not your traditional, like, invoked Mech Knight by any, uh, stretch of the imagination, this is more of, like, a pure Mech Knight focus build incorporating cards like World Legacy Secret, World Legacy Key. Uh, World Legacy Memory, as a matter of fact, is a very strong card. I'm very excited to see how this game plays out. Uh, so the World Legacy player, uh, is going first, and you don't see this often with, uh, Mech Knight players, usually they want to go second and take advantage of their opponent's columns, um, but they aim to spend their first turn normal summoning a tour guide from the underworld. Whoops, looks like I spoke incorrectly. Colors, folks. Uh, we're going into <laughs> Flame Buffalo. Yeah, Flame Buffalo. This is pretty nice. You can link it to the Bay Links. You can get rid of the redundant copy of Flame Buffalo in hand because you really don't need it at this point. You, of course, want to search the Salaman Great Sanctuary first. You're going to pitch Buffalo, draw a couple of cards. It's so nice how well Flame Hate Buffalo this. synergizes with the whole deck. It's fire. Uh, level three did matter when Mirage Stallion was still legal, but it's also Cybers. Uh, and Buffalo is just a really nice inclusion into the deck. I love the Prohibit Snake tech in here. This is one of like the best cards Salaman Great can play and is just such a blowout against unassuming opponents uh this was like standard when uh the invoked deck of choice was shadow and you had to find a way to outwind a unfortunately the meta has completely eclipsed that deck um but uh still like seeing it to deal with uh threats that would otherwise threaten uh salman great's low attack monsters and drawing the circle off of pot of desires Always seems to happen in my games. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Obviously, if you can get to Gazelle first, you would want to, uh, but it's not the end of the world. We'll see if uh, Kizar has the Gazelle. Doesn't oh. look like it, so we're going to be searching a Jack Jaguar here. Not exactly too ideal. We have Will, which is nice because Will can special summon from the hand. A lot of people forget that, and uh, we can just link both of these off into a wolf. We have Sanctuary to reincarnate into another wolf if we wish, but the downside is here we really don't have much outside of Circle to be recurring, which is fine. Um, we also could bluff potentially with this Imperial Order in Kizar's hand here, uh, just to potentially, um, maybe it's a Rage, maybe it's a Roar. They wouldn't expect Imperial Order typically in the main deck for this deck in particular, uh, but we have some plays. Also, getting Circle for the next turn is nice. Uh, Buffalo also being able to add, be added back off the Sunlight Wolf's effect is very good, because next turn we can just Normal Summon, Pitch Falco, draw more cards, and pretty much be off to the races. That's pretty good. I mean, this setup uh, is a little unassuming. Of course, it's no uh, Rage Roar uh, proc, but it's still pretty strong. You know, you've got a bluff. Uh, your opponent will play around Rage or Roar regardless. You get to sit on Imperial Order and Salaman Great Circle. I mean, seems pretty good. Salaman Great's setups are always rather unassuming, though, because they typically always look like this exactly. It's like always Sunlight Wolf and sets and maybe like will face up. I mean, we know one of the cards is presumably Circle because typically they're going to set it because we want to get an extra search. And then if Sunlight Wolf manages to survive the turn, uh, we get to add that circle back again on the following turn and uh, just get even more pluses. But Santa Claus... <laughs> 
<laughs> Santa Claus is hilarious. Um, part of the tour guide's Sangan setups is you want to be playing a lot of cards with under 1500 attack that you can summon via an inherent condition and not by activating an effect, because of course of the Sangan errata. Santa Claus is one of those. It's a way to clean up boards uh, if you don't need the search off of Sangan, and doing it here enables not only uh, a two mat off of the uh, blue sky that doesn't trigger Wolf's effect, but also uh, a turn off of any potential Salaman grade spells or traps in the back row. And now we have blue sky, and uh, luckily this will the Salaman grade on Kizar's end of the field is going to make it very easy for blue sky to resolve for two. We're going to normal summon this copy of Sangan. We can go into a morning star that's going to trigger the Sangan, get presumably the uh, orange uh, sunset that you were alluding to earlier off of that Sangan. Oh no, we're just going to go for tour guide. Okay. <laughs> sure. It says we've already got the uh, morning star. No reason to go any further. I'll just get TGU. Who cares? Sure. And now uh, we here comes red moon. Yeah. Red moon is a very nice one. Being able to banish a mech knight from the grave to pop a monster on the field. You can pop your own Santa Claus, uh, which is most likely what you're going to do, considering the fact that uh, Sunlight Wolf, or excuse me, not Sunlight Wolf, uh, Jack Jaguar could protect itself. We also want to use that Jack Jaguar in that column to summon out this uh, purple nightfall. And now we're going to go to battle. This is a pretty powerful setup. Uh, you get to activate Purple Nightfall here. You're going to have Secret with Indigo and Graveyard. Three zones are going to be shut off next turn. Uh, you've got Galaxy Cyclone if you want to head for something like a Will. Uh, while you can't proc out the Bay Lynx, it looks like uh, they were very reserved with that. That's what the attempt in the battle phase was for. Um, you would be able to otherwise. Here comes Blue Sky number two. Um, they're not on a huge Mech Knight package outside of the uh, Errant Orange, which we are far past, but uh, still probably good enough. It's. I think this is fine. We're going to see a flip of a circle here in end phase from Kizar. Not using the Bay Lynx. I mean, you're going to be able to get Jack Jaguar back anyway as soon as you summon another Bay Lynx with this Buffalo that you already have in hand. So it's perfectly okay oh. to let that go. I just realized why Circle's been adding not Gazelle. Is it? It's banished, yes. Is it? <laughs> it has to is be. Is it? Is it? There yeah. it is. Hey. I like how conveniently it was the last card you hovered over. <laughs> Yeah, it was building suspense. Uh, hard drawing the roar here is rather nice, actually, because since we don't have gazelle access, we really don't have an easy way to access these cards. Uh, Secrets is going to be rough, though. Um, Secrets is going to be able yeah, to get... Secrets is miserable. We're going to be able to get back this Indigo Eclipse. Uh, we will effectively have two effect negations now. Um, Bay Lynx doesn't particularly matter here, and Buffalo is in the graveyard, but essentially, as soon as we have any monsters that are going to use any sort of effect whatsoever, Nightfall will be able to negate them, and uh, it's... This is one of the reasons why Mech Knight is very powerful is the Indigo Eclipse World Legacy Secret combo here. So uh, we have all of the traps that we were looking for turn one, uh, but very few monster extenders. We could prohibit Snake this Indigo back to the hand. That's potentially good enough. I think that's probably the play here. We're going to go to Damage Step. This is one of the reasons why this effect is so potent is simply due to the fact that it does operate in that uh, that part of the game that not a lot of things can trigger. Now we can uh, use this Jack Jaguar in Greg to shuffle back Sunlight Wolf to summon itself to the arrow that Bay Lynx points to. We can then link both of those off for a Sunlight Wolf. And uh, we're feeling pretty good about this. If we can just get this roar and rage to stick um we're pretty set up here we can use a uh, wolf to get this flame buffalo back to the hand potentially draw more cards next turn we can go into a heat leo and shuffle both of those spells and traps and yes yeah, salaman great has somehow weaseled their way into the driver's seat by virtue of drawing rage and roar and this is one of the reasons why buffalo is so powerful as well over a card like lady debug uh, we're also seeing the uh, double heat leo here which is really nice Whoa. followed up with pot of desires going in deep here you know what Dizel's already gone i don't think i don't mind this you really don't have much that you really care about at this point but heat leo being able to force both of the back row cards to get shuffled away uh we're gonna... how do we have targets for this i was about to say uh i guess it's foxy that's fine that's a great one but we also get to set this roar and rage i think we were just trying to clear the back row there and uh now mm -hmm. this heat leo can resolve for three on rage and that is extremely powerful all right well uh, let's see how far tour guide can go um it's gonna be hard to resolve through a roar and a rage of course uh, but this is the critical turn you gotta win right here or else it's over we so in standby that purple is gonna come back that's one more chonker they'll have to contend with we also have the Bay Lynx. We have the Bailings in Grave too, so you're not really fearing much at this point in ensuring that Heat Leo is going to go anywhere. Uh, we're going to let Tour Guide resolve here. I guess that's oh, fine. Man. Um, I disagree. Uh, Sangan will be able to be chain blocked by whatever we go into from the uh, extra deck. This is quite frightening. Um, I would very much consider activating a Rage here. Yeah, at this point, you can Rage, and then that would be okay. I mean, you, again, you can Rage for three. I mean, again, you have Rage, you have Roar. <laughs> You're feeling pretty confident at this point. Mech Knight Purple Nightfall is going to banish itself for a Yellow Star. Yellow Star can attempt to pop some of these uh, new cards, but we're going to go into Cherubini here. Is. Yep, so now the Sangen will be able to be triggered here. Just refueling, going, okay, we'll tour guide again next turn. Who cares? 
So now Cherubini going to dump a copy of Silent Boots. And Silent Boots, of course, is uh, critical for the Cherubini combo in order to get Shade Brigandine. That enables a uh, zone setup, much like you would see in Invoked. Um, here, I don't think there's any uh, traps in the graveyard, so it's just additional fodder. So we're going to go for Blue Sky here. Um, I think at this point... Oh, we're going to let that resolve. Okay. There's still <laughs> targets in the deck. Being very conservative with that roar. Um, I was going to say, if anything, I think I wouldn't have let that resolve, considering that represents a plus two. Um, but now we're going to go off into Boral right, no Sword Dragon. no way this resolves. Yeah, Boral Sword Dragon here. Uh, we also get to summon this Yellow Star since we have a column still made. Yellow Star can potentially force the activation of one of these, especially knowing your opponent searched Yellow Star. That's one of the things that makes this a little dicey. This is going to have to force the roar here. Um, but again, Kizar drew, hard drew both of those, so they were completely unknown uh, to uh, Stanky here. Uh, this is cool, but unfortunately does lose to Rage, so we'll be able to target Heat Leo to pop both monsters, and uh, in main phase two, uh, this Indigo is just going to have to be enough. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I think this could have essentially ended in the same board without allowing Stanky to acquire all of these resources, because he was able to plus so much through the Mech Knight effects. Now here we're going to see a uh, Blackluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos, being made with a uh, level 7 or higher monster, so it has a little bit of built-in protection. Um, I believe we can, uh, so it, also, it can't be targeted and it can't be destroyed, so Heat Leo can't even knock it down at this point. That, a little late on the Nibiru. <laughs> yeah, a little late. This could be a little bit difficult for Salman Great to out. Yeah, um, I mean, how many, we've got two I, wolves still available, so we could recycle one of those traps. You specifically, I think, need to, yeah, we could recycle a trap. You could also just get Prohibit Snake back. Uh, uh, Kizar correctly saying, this is awkward. Uh, I guess you can Jaguar Wolf in Graveyard and, uh, start looping. Okay. Oh, no, they're going for Heat Leo well, instead to start, uh, tucking that set card. Yeah, so this is one of the things I love about Heat Leo is that if it manages to survive, you can shuffle the other one back that your reincarnation links summon with Jack Jaguar, resummon it through the Salmon Grit Sanctuary, immediately force whatever back row your opponent might have set. Um, we're also going to see the trigger effect of the Salmon Grit Roar in Graveyard from a reincarnation link summon, and wow, we're just going to see Whoa. a set and pass here. That is miserable. No way to out BLS. Well, from this position, you can just deck the Salaman Great player. Yeah. Uh, back comes the uh, the Purple Nightfall, but unfortunately, that's not a summon. It's a return. Correct. So it's not one for Nibiru. Mm -hmm. Now, here comes World Legacy Key. This is a card you don't very see too often unless you were playing Mech Knights, but here's Imperial Order. I mean, frankly, Kizar's going to lose in three turns anyway, so what's Imperial <laughs> Order at this point? <laughs> Right. Uh, so World Legacy Key uh, negates trap cards, which is great if you've got access to Indigo. It's a way you can prevent your opponent from raging or roaring you. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I don't think there's a way out if you have no way to uh, out BLS this turn. Uh, we're going to be able to tack over the Heat Leo. Um, this banishes the Baylinx, best case scenario. Uh, that prevents the activation of the BLS. Um, but you can still walk over it with the Purple Nightfalls, which are big dudes. Right, 2,500 is nothing to scoff at. Uh, Kizar quickly identifying in the chat that he could have resurrected a Falco that he had in his graveyard with Will, and then he could have linked off, like, say, that and, let's say, Jack Jaguar for anything just to get the uh, rage back to his field, and uh, that would have been able to uh, be a way to out this here. But, again, this is looking pretty rough. Uh, Phoenix is going to actually pop the Imperial Order on Kizar's side of the field. Uh, only two cards left in deck. He's only on 2,300 life as well. Here comes a blue sky that's going to trigger for one but nibiru in the hand Whoa. for kizar will be able to equalize things here and if there's any lifeline that kizar could have had this was it so um this is the out for uh kizar um i i can't help but feel that extending into a potential nibiru is basically the only way you lose this game from the Mech Knight player's perspective, we are uh, resolving blue, but unfortunately, there's nothing in its column anymore as it's no longer on the field. So as a result, um, all this uh, all this player is going to have to resolve is uh, the one onboard token, and they've got a will with which to do it. We've also talked about at length how a lot of players aren't even really playing Nibiru much anymore because its effectiveness has dwindled so significantly over the course of this format. And so, you know, maybe he wasn't even expecting that Salomon Great of all decks would be playing it. Uh, we're going to see Falco come back from the graveyard as well as a normal summon of foxy we're just going to go into a sunlight wolf here we're going to use falco's effect in graveyard to be able to set a uh, copy of rage that we had that falco being summoned off the will of course and uh, now we can pitch the spinny in our hand to get foxy back that can take care of the key and uh just like that Kizar might be able to uh to clean this up 
I mean, the token still has 4,300 defense. It's extremely difficult, especially without Heat Leo access. They're just walking through the motions here, and I don't know if they have it. Even if they do, they have to mount an offensive that'll win in two turns. Otherwise, they're just going to deck out. I don't think it's too particularly oh, difficult. No. I do see that uh, in Kizar's deck, he is playing uh, Zero Boros. So he could, and it actually looks like and this. And there's update Right, jammer. so here's exactly what he needs to do. Uh, he can just make a Zero Boros. Zero Boros has 21 cards banished in his own banished pile, as well as uh, four in the opponent. So uh, he's going to go for Transco Talker instead. This is perfectly fine. I think either way, this would have been game. But um, this right here is going Whoa. to represent uh, a ton of damage. Unless they don't see the line. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you got to be practicing those Zero Boros combos. Now this uh, purple is going to come back, and you're going to have to find out a way to um to get all of your uh, your monsters okay. to fire. Rage is great, but chaining purple means that you don't have to contend with it. Indigo clips to the hand uh, on a board with a three deep uh, column. I mean, this is very frightening. Yeah, I'm, looks like Stanky's just going to try to wall up here because if he can last one turn, uh, Kizar's just going to lose by deck out here. We're going to resurrect this copy of uh, Jack Jaguar with Will the Salmon Great. We're going to use the effect of Cell Night Wolf to get Rage back to our hand because it managed to survive a turn, which is always nice. Uh, this should represent enough damage. Jack Jaguar, funny enough, might get in with some piercing here. <laughs> Yeah, we get in for 18 yep. and then a 28 twice. Wow, and on the last turn of the game, I think the Salaman great player has finagled their way into lethal. Yeah, to be fair, a little oh, bit crusty. Wow. Kizar could have closed that out in the turn prior, but uh, nonetheless was still able to close it out with zero cards in deck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Does not happen often. Uh, I will say that was a pretty fantastic showing from Mech Knight as well. I am super interested in this deck. Unfortunately, it uh, is now going to have to contend with a Salaman Great Rage and a Hand Trap. That was a pretty nice mill off of Foxy, or I should say Excavation, rather. Uh, picking between Rage and Will mm -hmm. is a pretty tough one, but you do have Foxy. You also already have Spinny in hand, so you're able to get this fo uh, Foxy back to the board if you so chose. Um, but we're just going to pick the Spinny, just resurrect it that way, go for a Sunlight Wolf uh, Sanctuary. We can just Reincarnation Link Summon. We have Rage for two at the very least. Also, that Imperm set, Ash in hand. I get this is about as textbook as Salomon Great gets, and you really couldn't ask for more. Yeah, again, Salaman Great Boards, they're unassuming, but they're very powerful. Thankfully, we have spells and traps from the Mech Knight player, so we'll be able to set up Purple Knight Fall oh. Summons. Uh, setting two cards and then procking the Rage early, I like this, but the upstart Goblin in hand is going to spell the end of this line. This is one of the strengths that uh, Salaman Great has in a card like Rage, uh, I guess in this match particular, being able to shatter these columns. Uh, we're going to see infinite and permanence here on this copy of Indigo Eclipse just to deny uh, Stanky from having another column to work with so he can no longer move that a copy of indigo eclipse <laughs> but uh but i think that's the end of the turn yeah and with a couple copies of purple nightfall in hand he really doesn't have that much left going for him here this sunlight wolf managed to survive because bailinx is in the grave he was able to get back a copy of rage we can go for um uh falco at this point uh use the effect of sunlight wolf uh first effect to get the foxy back in hand and uh i mean you're feeling pretty good about this right now again you can't really get over the indigo eclipse that it's one of the big issues with salmon gray is big monsters but again you have rage to deal with that and you know that stanky's hands a little bit cluttered at this point unfortunately you did give yourself a column for purple nightfall to be summoned when you summoned that falco to that zone yeah, this is a really weird interaction for this matchup specifically. Uh, summoning to Wolf's Zone is really good insofar as it pluses you, but really bad insofar that it gives your opponent fodder for uh, Mech Knights. You knew your opponent had an additional Mech Knight in the hand, otherwise they wouldn't have attempted to move the Indigo Eclipse last turn, so you had to be prepared for this outcome. Yep. We'll be able to rage here, but the purple will be able to chain out in response, eating the Ash Blossom in the hand. Uh, so now, wow, purple actually going to go to the graveyard here. Uh, we're just going to yep. upstart here uh, now. Draw a card. B drawing into Blue Sky is pretty good, though. <laughs> that's about the best possible one. Uh, Blue Sky is going to be able to get two Mech Knights. Uh, I believe there are a multitude of ways that you can uh, find a uh, reasonable board from this position. Ash Blossom and Joyce bring the add back to the hand for the Salaman Great player. Unfortunately, Purple doesn't tag out. Uh, for cost, and as a result, uh, the first one will be locked in the graveyard, the second will be uselessly in the hand. Oh, and it looks like 
a lack of columns has ended the mech knight player's turn. Yeah, without any columns to play and a hand just completely loaded with mech knights, you don't have indigo eclipse or anything to move it. So Salmon Great gets an opportunity to capitalize here. We see this foxy effect going to fire off. Normal summon foxy isn't typically like the best, but it's fine, especially if that's all you really have to work with. Now we're going to link off this mm -hmm. Falco for a copy of uh, Bay Lynx. This allows us to get rage back again, by the way. This is the third time we've seen rage. And one of the reasons why Salmon Great is a very solid deck, the amount of recursion this deck has and uh wow we're actually just seeing a pass here interesting we don't want to create any columns for the mech knight player but here we go we had a uh, set card off the top uh which is a set pot of desires and red moon is now able to hit the board so this will proc the uh, Rage, of course, because um, I, I suppose you probably uh, don't want to be sending a Salman Great from your hand to the graveyard. I mean, I, I would consider it regardless, but an early proc means that you can target Lynx and hit that set card, locking your opponent out of spells and traps. They get in for a fair amount of damage and could potentially make Morningstar with an Indigo Eclipse, but only if they're on two copies of Secrets as you've already seen one. I do kind of like this line. Like, it incentivizes your opponent to go for a big Link Summon. You've got a Nibiru in hand. You've got an Ash Blossom if things get too crusty. Denying any of the effects of Morningstar would be fine, but it looks like no second copy of Secrets means that they're not even going to go for it. Wow, that's rough. Uh, looks like he had two copies of Secrets in the side deck here, and I think he took one out for game two. Oh, uh, no. That is really rough, because if he had it, he would have had two effect negations here. Effect negations on board without removing the threat for Salmon Great, not the best, but definitely would slow down in a simplified game state. And here we go, Salmon Great doing Salmon Great things. We're just going to go forth, use this Flame Buffalo, draw a couple cards on the back of a Sunlight Wolf Summon. Uh, we're going to shuffle this other one back to get Jack Jaguar back, and uh, I mean, I mean, we're feeling pretty good with Ash and Nibiru in hand just as insurance at this point. Uh, uh, I do like um, the fact that the Salman Great player is out of Baylinx, but has still found a way to make this work. Discarding Nibiru does telegraph you have the second one, uh, but I think they are so far ahead in terms of card advantage at this point, it may not matter. Yep, we get to use the uh, Gazelle that's in hand now since we reincarnation summon this wolf. Uh, this will allow us to get Roar if we wish. Uh, we could actually get Rage and Roar back, I believe. Oh, and that is what we're doing. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. Okay, it looks like we're just going for Rage here. Um, I think he actually did Reincarnation Link Summon already, so we might not be getting Roar back. We're using the effect of Falco here uh, to bounce Gazelle back to the hand, which is great, but... Well, we can make a rank for We can, but we're not going to be able to get that Roar back since Falco's effect is either uh, one once per turn. Uh, one of the downsides, but it's fine. Top deck tour guide off the top's pretty nice, but in the face of a Rage... It's nice, but we've got Nibiru, we've got Ash, we've yeah. got Rage. I mean, <laughs> any of those will close the uh, door on this game, I Feel. Absolutely. We do have the column, though, provided to us by the Salmon Great player. Again, this interesting interaction in this matchup specifically. So Indigo Eclipse will be able to hit the board, but it does trigger the Sunlight Wolf, so it does come with a downside. And same as last time, going into a copy of uh, BLS and hoping that it's enough, you've got to expect your opponent has an Abiru, so at minimum you want to play around that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, BLS not only cannot be targeted, it also cannot be destroyed. Love that this card works in that now, way. Now, one of the nice things is that with the Bay Lynx and Grave, BLS Link will not get its effect to uh, either attack again to banish a card or gain 1500 attack because it has to destroy a monster by battle. So as a result of that... And correctly identifying here, yeah. that's the fifth summon. We'll wait till next time. <laughs> it's playing around the Nibiru, don't want to get blown out like last time. But this puts Kizar in a very powerful position to be able to go into a possible OTK with update jammer as well as uh zero boros potential or even transcode um it's it, it's easy to hit over it at this point we also have prohibit snake by the way so we don't even have to worry about yeah, that's it. a sweet rip off the top yeah we have gazelle in hand as well this is uh and here we go here update jammer, jammer. Yeah, this, this game might just about be over here uh we're gonna see the gazelle get summoned to the board we're going to uh reset as a matter of fact uh this copy of uh i think it was the roar that we reset here and, uh, yep, it's the roar. We'll go into transcode, yep. use transcode's effect, get back update jammer, and uh, this this looks to be the end of the yep. game. We get to attack, activate prohibit snake in damage step. That's two twenty eights, a twenty five, and a fifteen. That is going to be lethal. And wow, the Salman great player finding the out against an extremely interesting, but unfortunately. Um, miserable deck against the archetype that pluses when you summon things to its column. Yeah, it's one of the things that's really strong about Prohibit Snake, though. It outs things that Salmon Great traditionally has a difficult time outing. Also, if you're on the Lady Debug, it can search it, so it's a nice way to just easily access it. Uh, Sign Up Mining can also get to it as well. But a uh, very good showing of the Mech Knight deck. It was kind of cool to see something not invoked Mech Knight specifically, but more of a uh, Shannon <laughs> yeah. Long-inspired uh, build here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's going to be it for the Swiss rounds of the Reddit Championship Series. I'll be back with Sir Eminon and Top 16 after this. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, Alex. Um, everyone, I, I think 
most of you already are already, but please obviously <laughs> subscribe to uh, to Simo um, and uh, donate to his Patreon. Um, send money in the mail to him. Uh, I don't know. Um, I will also ex- anything I will, else you'd like I to plug. I will also accept binions of gold as well, or bull- yeah, yeah, yeah. Of if gold, you have excuse like, me, wrong word. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Confederacy dollars, um, uh, Illuminati checks, uh, anything you want. Cryptocurrency. Crypto is really hot. Right yeah, now. Bitcoin, Dogecoin. <laughs> thanks so much for having me, Joseph. It was All right, a lot thanks of fun. for being on. Yeah, of course.